Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk about element number 63, europium. Europium is named for the continent of Europe. According to the author, as with ruthenium, element number 44, this is sort of like being named for a country, but not the same. So I don't count it among the four that really are. Germanium, element number 32. Polonium, element number 84. Francium, element number 87 and americium, element number 95. Europium's applications, somewhat unusual for a rare earth, center not on magnetism, but on luminosity. It's used in phosphorescent paint, including some amazing modern varieties that can glow brightly for many minutes or dimly for many hours after being exposed just briefly to a strong light source. Europium is also used in the phosphors in those increasingly scarce CRT cathode ray tube monitors and color television sets. Soon to be historical curiosities, these devices are giant vacuum tubes in which a focused beam of electrons is accelerated by thousands of volts towards tiny dots of red, green, and blue phosphor on the inside of the front wall, the screen. The color of light emitted by each dot is determined by the elements and compounds in that patch. Red was a problem in early color television sets because no good bright red phosphor was known, and the other two colors had to be intentionally dimmed to maintain the correct color balance. With the invention of europium-based red phosphors, color television could suddenly become bright and vibrant, thus contributing even more effectively to the rotting of children's minds the world over. Compact fluorescent light bulbs, those wonderful devices that have liberated us from Edison's horribly inefficient incandescent lamps, also use europium in the mix of phosphors they employ to create a pleasant spectrum of light. Again, according to the author, I am now so accustomed to the bright, beautiful daylight spectrum light from my compact fluorescence that I find the dingy, old yellow light of incandescent bulbs to be quite depressing. With gadolinium, we return to rare earths with magnetic applications, though of quite a different sort. We'll talk about the element gadolinium in the next video. Europium, element number 63. Chemical symbol, EU. Although it's named after the continent of Europe, europium is mainly found in rocks in American and Chinese mines. Europium compounds glow red in ultraviolet light, so they are added to banknotes, including euronotes, to prove they are authentic. Fluorescent europium compounds are a security feature in euro banknotes to combat forgeries. Here we have a laboratory sample of pure europium. Its atomic mass is 151.964, its state is a solid, and its state of discovery was in 1901 by Eugene Anatole Demarque. The yellowish metal goes black when exposed to air. Here we have a map of 1901 CE, europium's date of discovery. We are here on the periodic table. Europium, element number 63, the lanthanoid elements. Its symbol is EU, its atomic number is 63, its atomic weight is 151.96, its color is discolored silver, its standard state is solid at 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Its classification is metallic. Suave and sophisticated, I'm quite the cosmopolitan European. Useful for all sorts of lighting, my compounds give off a spooky glow when light is shown on them. I help energy efficient bulbs give out white light by combining my fluorescent red and blue glows. I also make a neat anti-forgery strip on Euro banknotes. How very illuminating. Its density is 5.2 for 4 grams per centimeter cubed, its melting point is 826 degrees Celsius or 1519 degrees 
Fahrenheit. Its boiling point is 1527 degrees Celsius or 2781 degrees Fahrenheit. Its chemical symbol again is EU and its date of discovery was in 1901. Europium, element number 63, chemical symbol EU. Paul Emile Lecoq de Boisbedran found europium first in 1892, but its discovery is usually credited to the French chemist Eugene Anatole de Marquet, who isolated it in 1901. It's used in the inks used to print euro banknotes under ultraviolet UV light. The notes glow red, proving they are genuine. Here we have a laboratory sample of pure europium. Europium, element number 63, chemical symbol EU. As we previously mentioned, banknotes. Fluorescent europium compounds are a security feature in euro banknotes to combat forgeries. Screens. Europium compounds are used as red phosphors used in CRT televisions and phone screens. Light bulbs. Small quantities of europium are added to low energy bulbs to give a warmer light. According to Royal Society of Chemistry. Europium. Oxide discovered in 1901 by Demarquet as an impurity in samarium, crude metal isolated in 1937, pure metal prepared in 1953. Most reactive of the rare earths. Europium can ignite if only scratched by a knife. Here we have an image of a light bulb. This tiny 2 watt compact fluorescent bulb produces a bit of light for nearly no power. Here we have an image of monocyte sand. Monocyte sand contains nearly all the rare earths. Here we have an image of europium stored under oil. Pure europium oxidizes over time, even when stored under oil. Here we have an image of a package that has a fluorescent bulb and a nail clipper. Compact fluorescent bulb sold with a pair of nail clippers. Wacky enough for Japan, but actually spotted in China. Let's continue with element number 63, europium. Europium uses today. Europium is used in the printing of euro banknotes. It glows red under UV light, and forgeries can be detected by the lack of this red glow. Low energy light bulbs contain a little europium to give a more natural light by balancing the blue cold light with a little red warm light. Europium is excellent at absorbing neutrons, making it valuable in control rods for nuclear reactors. Europium doped plastic has been used as a laser material. It is also used in making thin superconducting alloys. Europium is usually separated from other rare earths by reducing it to the plus two oxidation state and precipitating it with sulfate ions. The metal has been prepared by electrolysis of the fused halides and by reduction of its oxide by lanthanum metal, followed by distillation of the europium metal. Europium exists in a single allotropic structural form. It is body-centered cubic with A is equal to 4.5 A27 angstroms at room temperature. The primary use of europium is in red phosphors in optical displays and TV screens that use cathode ray tubes and in glass for fluorescent lamps. It is also used in scintillators for x-ray tomography and as a source of blue color in light emitting diodes. LEDs Europium 3 oxide Europium 3 oxide is a chemical compound of europium and oxygen. It is widely used as a red or blue phosphor in television sets and fluorescent lamps, and as an activator for yttrium based phosphors. It is also an agent for the manufacture of fluorescent glass, according to Wikipedia. Its molar mass is 351.926 grams per mole. Its formula is EU2. O3, its melting point is 4,262 degrees Fahrenheit or 2,350 degrees Celsius. Its density is 7.4 grams per centimeters cubed. Its boiling point is 6,800.
154 degrees Fahrenheit or 3,790 degrees Celsius. Its solubility in water is negligible. Its crystal structure is monoclinic cubic, europium 3 oxide. Two atoms of europium bound to three atoms of oxygen. Here we have europium atoms and oxygen atoms. Again, europium is used in cathode ray tubes. A cathode ray tube is a vacuum tube containing one or more electron guns, which emit electron beams that are manipulated to display images on a phosphorescent screen. The images may represent electrical waveforms, pictures, radar targets, or other phenomena. A CRT on a television set is commonly called a picture tube, according to Wikipedia. It was invented in 1897 according to CERN.CH. Europium History Europium's story is part of the complex history of the rare earths, aka lanthanoids. It began with cerium, which was discovered in 1803. In 1839, Carl Mazander separated two other elements from it, lanthanum and one he called didymium, which turned out to be a mixture of two rare earths, presiodymium and neodymium, as revealed by Carl Ayer in 1879. Even so, it still harbored another rare metal, samarium, separated by Paul Eacute Mille Lecoq de Boisvedran, and even that was impure. In 1886, Jean Charles Galazard de Marignac extracted gadolinium from it. But that was still not the end of the story. In 1901, Eugene Anatole de Marquet carried out a painstaking sequence of crystallizations of samarium magnesium nitrate and separated yet another new element, europium. Eugene Anatole de Marquet was a French chemist who designed an apparatus to produce a spark using an induction coil and used it to generate the spectra of rare earth elements which he examined using spectroscopy, thus detecting the element europium in 1896 and isolated it as the oxide europia in 1901, according to Wikipedia. He discovered europium. Element number 63. Essentially, these elements were all discovered as if it were from a Mitrushka doll, also known as the stacking dolls, the nesting dolls, Russian tea dolls or Russian dolls, are a set of wooden dolls of decreasing size placed, placed one, one inside, inside another, another, according to Wikipedia. It started with cerium and then ended with europium. The element was discovered in 1901 by French chemist Eugène Anatole de Marquet and named for Europe. One of the least abundant rare earths, its concentration in earth's crust is nearly the same as bromines. It occurs in minute amounts in many rare earth minerals such as monazite, seen here, and basnesite, and also in the products of nuclear fission. Both of its naturally occurring isotopes are stable. Europium-151, 47.81%, and Europium-153, 52.19%. A total of 34 excluding nuclear isomers, radioactive isotopes, varying in mass from 130 to 165 and having half-lives as short as 0.9 milliseconds, europium-130, and as long as 36.9 years, europium-150, have been characterized. Europium is named after the continent of Europe. The name derives from the continent of Europe. It was separated from the mineral samaria in magnesium samarium nitrate by the French chemist Eugene Anatole de Marquet in 1896. It was also first isolated by de Marquet in 1901. Europium was discovered by Eugene Anatole de Marquet, a French chemist in 1896, according to National Institutes of Health.gov. pubchem.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov. Element Europium. Europium EU element. Pubchem. 
Biological role. Europium has no known biological role. It has low toxicity. Natural abundance. In common with other lanthanides, europium is mainly found in the minerals monazite and basnesite. It can be prepared from these minerals. However, the usual method of preparation is by heating europium 3 oxide with an excess of lanthanum under vacuum. In its predominant oxidation state of plus 3, europium behaves as a typical rare earth, forming a series of generally pale pink salts. The EU 3 plus ion is paramagnetic because of the presence of unpaired electrons. In chemistry, an unpaired electron is an electron that occupies an orbital of an atom singly, rather than as part of an electron pair. Each atomic orbital of an atom specified by the three quantum numbers n, l, and m has a capacity to contain two electrons, electron pair with opposite spins, according to Wikipedia, wikipedia.org wiki unpaired electron. Europium possesses the most easily produced and stablest plus two oxidation state of the rare earths. Europium plus three solutions can be reduced by zinc metal and hydrochloric acid to give EU2 plus in solution. The ion is stable in dilute hydrochloric acid if oxygen from the air is excluded. A series of white to pale yellow or green Europium plus two salts are known, such as Europium two sulfate chloride hydroxide and carbonate. The halides may be prepared by hydrogen reduction of the anhydrous trivalent halides. Here are all of the formulas. Europium 3 fluoride to Europium 2 fluoride. Europium 3 chloride to Europium 2 chloride. Europium 3 bromide to Europium 2 bromide. And Europium 3 iodide to Europium 2 iodide. So the molecules of europium presented are europium 2 sulfate, europium 3 chloride, europium 3 hydroxide, europium 2 carbonate, europium 3 fluoride, europium 3 chloride, europium 3 bromide, europium 3 iodide, europium 2 fluoride, europium dichloride, europium 2 bromide, and europium 2 iodide. Here we have the oxidation states and isotopes of europium europium 151 and europium 153. And finally, let's continue with europium element number 63. Europium EU chemical element, a rare earth metal of the lanthanide series of the periodic table. Europium is the least dense, the softest, and the most volatile member of the lanthanide series. The pure metal is silvery, but even after a short exposure to air, it becomes dull because it readily oxidizes in air to form EuOH2 times H2O. Here is another form. Europium plus water, water in the form of liquid or gas. Again, water is oxidized hydrogen. Europium quickly reacts with water and diluted acids, except hydrofluoric acid, HF, in which it is protected by a layer of EUF3. Europium is a very strong paramagnet above about 90 Kelvin, negative 183 degrees Celsius, or negative 298 degrees Fahrenheit. Below that temperature, the metal orders antiferromagnetically, forming a spiral structure. So that was Europium explained in X minutes or less, and as a short amount of time as possible. Once again, if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the rest of the videos on the periodic table, and stay tuned for future miscellaneous videos regarding STEM and various other applications. Other than that, Thank you everyone for watching. Have a great one.